India's list of celebrities runs long. However, very few among these noted personalities of India evoke conflicting feelings of fear, respect and awe together in the minds of superpowers. Awul Pakir Jainala Ben Abdul Kalam or APJ Abdul Kalam as he is known as is the one such personality. The main force behind India's first successful satellite launch in 1980 and the person behind India's current ambitious missile program. Dr. Kalam says his inspiration comes from history books which tell the fact that the world's first war rockets were made in India. I was uh, always uh, enamored about this uh, battle, you know, at Chirangapatta. There was a big battle between British and uh, Indian forces. And uh, so, we, it is written, some of the rockets used there, you know. So I was interested, uh, how in 17th century, you know, 18th century, how did they make these uh, rockets? So I went to that place, Sirangapatta. Sirangapatta, Patnam, it's called. So I went to that place, tried to find out, you know, what is, uh, how, who would have done that. But you know, as usual in India, we don't maintain the history. So I have to build a lot of information. Then one guy from uh, abroad, uh, USA, he had done some research on Indian uh, ancient rockets. There he talks about uh, India's first war rocket. He writes there, this war rocket is uh, available in a museum, artillery museum, of Warwick uh, uh, Museum. So I went there and uh, uh, saw that war rocket, a small fellow, tiny fellow. You know, it was uh, frightening in those days. They defeated the British in the first war, Srangapatna war was defeated. And the uh, second war, of course, the poor was killed. But when they opened his uh, fort, they have found hundreds of rockets ready to fire. <laughs> you know, that means uh, technology, the method of making the rocket, it was there in India. Determined to carry forward the tradition and bring glory back to India. Kalam joined the Indian Space Research Organization and later Defense Research and Development Organization. It is uh, somewhere in 70, 73, 1973, I, I was appointed as a project director for the India's first satellite launch vehicle, which will put a Rohini satellite in the orbit. And in 1980, July, 18th July, we have uh, successfully launched. Of course, every program, there will be a, a technological problems will come in. Our earlier attempt in 1979, we had a, a failure. We, the SLV-3 could not inject the Rohini satellite in the orbit. But 19, that is uh, in July 1980, it was successfully launched and many successes followed. This is uh, the, my first uh, organization, uh, ISRO, where I worked for nearly 25 years. Then I was uh, asked to take over a uh, Defense Research and Development uh, Laboratory that's situated in Hyderabad, top DRDO. In nine, I think it's 1982. And there uh, we have to we evolve a missile program and uh, design and develop uh, five, type, five types of missiles Pradivi, Trishu, and Akash, and, uh, and Nag, and also a technology demonstrator, Agni. What makes Kalam stand a cut above others? is his humanistic view of life, leadership qualities, coupled with determination to strengthen the motherland. Type of person whom you look at around somewhere else, then you will feel you are not met such persons before. 
and that is if you want me a one sentence type of expression he is a sort of a unique person i know dr kalam uh, for more than 25 years and uh, <clears throat> what i see in him is he knows uh, every scientist young scientist who contributes for the project and he builds him around his strength so the scientists feel that he is monitored by the the chief of the organization and he gets um, uh, into the program more involved and he goes and reports to him what he has done so slowly he builds him around his strength and makes him great today if i look back i see more than 50 to 60 leaders are born in india uh, because of his association i have seen him in slv3 i have seen him in the missile program and um, my uh, the the thing which i appreciate is that he believes that everybody has got strength he doesn't reject anyone one of kalam's main tasks at the drdo is the indigenous production of five families of missiles under the integrated guided missile program all the system four missile system it's intended for us all the army navy air force and uh, the prithvi we have uh, completed the program our uh, thrishul daring completion that is surface to air missile and nag and akash uh, it will go into deployment by 1998 so it's going as per schedule what makes these five weapons unique is that for the first time india has produced missiles totally indigenously with no technical or other help from any other nation and despite restrictive world policies like the nuclear non proliferation treaty npt missile technology control regime mtcr and the comprehensive test ban treaty ctbt the developed uh, countries but 8 to 10 countries they joined together they established what is called missile technology control regime mtcr specifically directed towards these two programs agni and prithvi now how do we combat this type of technological control regimes one answer once you become self reliant then the people respect but will these missiles be able to combat the sophisticated weapons from other countries in india self reliant in missile technology we can design we can develop we can lead to protection any type of missiles this unfortunately is often criticized by detractors who say that a poor country like india can ill afford to spend so lavishly on space and missile technologies dr kalam answers the space technology it is uh, it is uh, it gives the it gives the meteorological forecast it gives the communication it finds out the natural resources on the earth so it's a part of societal uplift as far as the defense uh, research development concerned to do a peaceful work you have to defend the country for that you need the strength okay so i get a feeling we if india is not poor people thinking is poor okay only our thinking is poor if we think big we can also equally become a great country the missile production technology has resulted in a number of developments in other fields too most prominently in the medical field there is a uh, agni in the tip you will see a a heat shield there is a material called carbon composites the very light you know it stands about 3500 degrees celsius outside when it's re-entered at hypersonic speed but still inside temperature will be like this room temperature and that material we have developed for that purpose so one of my friends uh, medical professor doctor he saw that material so light and he took me to a his orthopedic hospital in hyderabad he told me see such a light material he showed some of the young girls and boys who were having the the fros floor reaction arthritis or calipers you know for the polio patients it went 4 kg each 
caliper four kilogram. Then we both of a uh, both team that is uh, my team and his medical team, uh, my technical team, his medical team. They worked together and brought out their forwards for the polio patients. It weighs four hundred grams, four kilogram, one ton. The children were very happy to wear, very light. So whatever we do, it gets into the defense technology spin-off. Like FROs, cardiac pacemaker, and uh, cardiac catheter. Now a yes, cardiac stent. But uh, the medical team and uh, the ADO science technical team they work together, and we succeed. We are succeeding. Another aspect of Dr. Kalam, which very few know about, is that this strong man of India is also a sensitive poet. Poetry is um, gives you. Uh, what I can say, some bliss. <laughs> you know, when you are working in various areas, difficult areas, not difficult areas, it puts you, uh, it uh, smoothens your your uh, thoughts and ideas. So it's an outlet. I will say it's an outlet. Of all the resources, the ignited mind our ignited soul is more powerful compared to any resource on the earth, above the earth and under the earth. Dr. Kalam's vision for his country stems from his search for these ignited souls among his countrymen. If you are to be great, if the nation has to become great, you have to think big, okay? You have to think big. We should not be beaten by various constraints put to various nations. I get a feeling the, we must have for next 20, 25 years a vision before us, that is, how the country will become self-reliant in various sectors of life, how we upgrade the life, that is, a good life for the nation, how it will come. It can come only by technology. Technology is the tool. So our uh, our policy makers to capture as a technology the best tool, it can give the good quick results. So technology vision is the best solution for the nation.